If you're an OG subscriber, you know the rules. If Seb Berwick does something good, I go absolutely crazy. This is stage three of the Arctic race of Norway. The decisive GC day before stage four tomorrow, 184Ks from Finchnes, Senja to Moljev Alpine Village. The final climb, it's all about that. Three and a half Ks at 7.6. Christoph was wearing the leader's jersey for today's stage and to be honest he held on the climb really well at the end but he would lose it uh, and maybe he can try and take back some bonus seconds tomorrow but a breakaway went with two riders going for points first Zverznes in the orange salmon jersey going for the KOM points and Martin Larsabora Hansgrohe who won the stage yesterday he was in the break trying to pick up the intermediate sprint points but Zverznes I mean, he, the man must be addicted to salmon. Uh, that's the only explanation I can find. Uh, he took another 12 points today. He seemed very happy with himself as well. I think he has it wrapped up ahead of tomorrow. He needs some help eating all that salmon. Martin last picked up some intermediate sprint points, but I think Christoph is still ahead of him after stage one because the last didn't take any sprint points on stage one because he got dropped. But the Peloton had it pretty much in check. Norway national team were chasing, I think for Leknusund, Israel were helping out, Unox honoring the race, helping Burgos as well, Intermarche for Odd Christian Iking. So lots of teams were helping, so the break was managed pretty well. And it started attacking itself with like 7Ks to go. Bit bizarrely, because they still had a one minute lead, and Verznes is pretty strong, but yeah, they just started tagging each other, so they were done for before the base of that 3.7 kilometer climb where Ben Hermans has won before. He won in 2015, the 35 year old in Israel startup nation, the favorite for the stage. And yeah, they were keeping him in good position before this Israel startup nation while the break. I think they were just going for the combativity prize at that point. They get onto it. Rig Zabel pulls really fast. Then Van Asbrook on the front for Israel startup nation. Ben Hermans is actually sitting mid-pack here. He's not on his train. And he's trying to sort of ride this climb steadily and patiently. Another attack comes from an Uskatel rider. And it's your boy, Seb Berwick, the Australian. This isn't even as hard as Mount Kutha begins the chase and it's not really a chase they will talk about the plan or Ben Hermans will elaborate on Israel's plan in a second but Berwick absolutely ripped this for about three minutes on the front followed by all the favorites odd Christian Iking, Le Fay, Batis, Stella etc. It goes past this lad says out of my damn way I got this field to split and split it he does Bargui on the back, but no Ben Hermans. And this is why it was a risky strategy. And I thought, has he made a mistake here As when he sits up? But all the other favorites, as you can see in this photo, were cooked at this point. They all had to recover. No one could counterattack. And Ben Hermans slides up, to quote his words, riding his limit back to this group. And here's what he had to say about Israel's plan. I tried to put all my teammates in the front to push harder than uh, than actually I could take. And uh, the other favorites, they, they followed my team, Tom van Asbrug and Seb Berwick. They put them all over the limit, actually. I came back on my limit. And you see he tries a little seated acceleration here as he gets back to that group. I think the Delco Rider Prades was marking him. Odd Christian Eiking, one of the top three contenders for the stage. The Norwegian attacks. And we still got like 1,300 meters to go when Le Fay attacks. The Cofidis, winner of a Giro stage from a breakaway. Hermans looked to Odd Christian Eiking to close it uh, slid over to the left, saw he got a gap off the wheel and begins riding again at his pace. Battistella, the Astana rider, is dropped. And so these are the three main riders that are going to be contesting this stage now with a K to go about 7%. Lefay for Kofidis, Ben Harmans, Belgian for Israel Startup Nation, and Odds Christian Eiking, Battistella, would he every time he'd try and get close. Hermans would accelerate and then he'd go back to the group behind with Warren Bargi and Co. A little bit disappointing. I thought Bargi could do quite well here, at least be in this group of three riders. But Herman starts riding again on the front. It's an interesting but risky strategy what they did, Israel, because what if someone countered off Seb's pace? I guess they were factoring that, well, they're not going to be able to because Seb did, you know, really good numbers for the, those four minutes. And it's always something I think about. And it happened, I think, on stage three on Etna in the 2020 Giro. Was it Fabro pulling, I think, for Bora Hansgrohe? 
if the train or the leader of the team that's pulling isn't on their train's wheel and you're on another team, why not just let their wheel go? I guess this is a different scenario where, well, if you let Berwick's wheel go, maybe you could go and win the stage. But it is something you often see more experienced riders doing if they notice that the opposition team leader isn't on their train, they'll just let that domestique's wheel go so that they don't have to spike their watts and it kind of slows the whole pace down if they don't want it going too quick. But given that none of these riders had counterattacked uh, after Hermans had tried a couple of accelerations, he said in a post-race interview, I knew they were pretty much finished. So he began a long sprint and he even made this a little bit closer than he needed it to be. Maybe he underestimated odd Christian Eiking. I think maybe he was trying to gain more time on the road to the likes of Battistella and co. But he leads them out. We've still got 200 meters to go. Kicks it up another gear. And then you're going to see him shift again at this point and go a little bit quicker again as odd Christian Eiking and Lafay are fighting for his wheel. 75 meters to go. And Christian Eiking nearly comes out of his wheel but Hermans takes the stage, the 13th win for Israel Startup Nation this year. Hermans is pumped out of contract next year. I mean, maybe we will renew at Israel Startup Nation, this is according to PCS, but still a really good rider capable of picking up wins here and there at dot pro races and helping in world tour level competition. Here's his post-race thoughts. Oh, it was so nice because I, I won it also in 2015 and I replayed this finish many times when I was riding on the rollers or something because it was so, yeah, surprisingly that I won. They never saw me in the front and then finally I could take the win. So it was really nice to do it again, just the same. And when you start as a favorite, uh, yeah, there's a really big uh, thing that falls off your shoulders. and. Uh, I'm so happy I could finish this off for the team. Here's the final top 10. Hermans, Old Christian Eiking, Lefebvre, Battistella, Prades, Oswald, Lechnusson, Soto, Sanchez, Mo, and Train. Hermans goes into the yellow, or Midnight Sun, they call it, leader's jersey. Only four seconds ahead of Old Christian Eiking, so there's bonus seconds tomorrow. It's a little bit tight. Not going to be an easy stage for Israel Startup Nation. A rolly 163k stage finishing in Harstad. We've got these 2k, 4.2% climbs and uphill finish. So if Old Christian Eiking wins the stage or there's these intermediate sprint points, there might be bonus seconds there as well. I think they're talking about... Uh, Van Asbrook and Zabel going for those to take up those bonus things. Anyway, it's going to be an exciting stage. So there's a link in the description below to all the broadcasts if you want to watch it. I'm keen to watch. There's always been excitement, or usually there has been excitement in the past on the last stage of Arctic Race of Norway. Remember that Lushenko, Warren Bargi battle, and it looks close again. So tune in tomorrow. Berwick looking good for the Vuelta. We'll obviously all be rooting for him on the channel going to the Vuelta. Hopefully you can pick up a stage from the break. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did. Of course, I'm relentlessly biased in respect of the young Australian riders, but you're just going to have to take that. And I'll see you with the stage four recap tomorrow. Ciao.